Now in this question we're given that the two forces F1 and F2, F1 then was I minus 3J newtons and F2 was PI plus 2PJ newtons. In the first part of the question then we've got to find out the angle between F2 and the vector J. So what I'd do is to draw a diagram. What we've essentially got is the vector I goes this way, it's a unit vector, and the vector j goes upwards. So if we're looking at f2, p in the i direction, 2p in the j direction, we're told that p is a positive constant, so we know that both these values are positive. So if I was to sketch f2 as a vector, we go say p units, whatever p units is, let's imagine that, uh, let's just put on a dotted line. Let's imagine that that's p units. Then 2p units would be upwards in the j direction, 1, 2, It'd be something like that. Okay, So we've got that this is p and this is 2p. And so the vector f2 would go from here to here going in that direction. That would be the vector f2 then. Now it says what angle does f2 make with the positive j vector. So if j goes upwards then we're looking at, if we put a line in here, this angle in here. I'm going to call that theta. Now theta is the same as this angle over here. They're alternate angles. Okay, So I'm going to find out this value of theta. You could, if you want, find this one here by trigonometry. Once you've found it, you could take it away from 90 degrees, obviously, to get this theta. But I'm just going to go straight for it from here. So if we do that, what we've got then is that the tan of theta equals the opposite side, which is p, over the adjacent side, 2p. So if we just write that down here, we've got tan of theta equals the opposite, p, over the adjacent 2p. And you can clearly see that these p's cancel out. p into p goes 1, p into 2p goes twice. So we end up with tan theta equaling a half. Let's just put that in, that tan theta equals a half. So to get theta, we need to inverse tan a half. And if you do that on your calculator, make sure obviously it's in degrees, then you should find what you get is 26.565 and so on degrees. And if we round that to say one decimal place, what we're going to get is 26.6 .6 degrees to one decimal place. All right, well that brings us now to the end of the first part of this question.